Hey, everybody, and welcome back to Rugby Wrap-Up. Thank you for joining us in this week's rendition of Zach Attack, the big play breakdown with Mr. Zach Lanning. Zach, what do you got for us? Well, Matt, I want to start in L.A. with the first of the doubleheader that was played out there. That's the New England Free Jacks who came to town to take on the San Diego Legion. Both teams struggling so far this season, looking for a wins, you know, where they can get it. We're going to start right at the beginning of the game. 0-0 zero, zero, zero is the score in the first five minutes. And you have San Diego looking to get something going off of a line out. So the ball is taken cleanly and gets out into the back line, eventually winding up with fly half Santiago Iglesias. But it's this moment, Matt, where things start to take a turn for the worse for the Legion. And Santiago Iglesias, of course, did not sing feelings. Nothing more than feelings. No? Okay. Continue, Zach. Free Jacks number eight, Vian Conradi, absolutely wallops Iglesias as he's letting the ball go. And that's a textbook tackle, Matt, and it's really your job as a back row forward in this case to get in and disrupt the opposing offense by targeting their key decision makers like the fly half position. And now despite this huge hit, Iglesias had managed to get the pass away, but unfortunately it was a little too strong and it ricochets off of Legion winger Cole Zirconi. Zirconi being their second round selection from the inaugural MLR draft, making his season debut in this spot. And now, Matt, New England really smells blood in the water. Uh, they've been very good on the counterattack all season, and they thrive in chaotic situations like this. And this is just, I want to walk you through the textbook example of a counterattack by New England. Please do. Winger Poasa Waganabout makes an athletic play to snag the ricochet out of the air, and then he powers through several Legion tackle attempts, putting San Diego in an incredibly tough position almost immediately. Out of that ruck, New England completely reverses field with a series of quick passes through the hands. Since San Diego is still trying to transition from offense to defense, this move makes it even harder for the defensive line to find any sort of definitive shape as they have to hustle to track the ball all the way across the field. Now, the runners eventually brought down, but scrum half John Poland is there immediately to get the ball moving back the other way. And Zach, it's ironic that Poland is not Polish. He's Irish. Okay, another lead balloon. Go ahead, continue. Now, Poland hits a pot of forwards, You're perhaps looking for just a straightforward crash ball to draw Legion defenders in. But here's where you start to see the benefit of the incredibly fast counterattack from New England, Matt. San Diego's defensive line is not properly set. They're down to man since Iglesias was injured in the tackle earlier, and they're not communicating effectively to get themselves reset here, which has created some huge gaps that the Free Jacks are going to look to exploit. Prop uh, Sefa Agase sees uh, one of those huge holes I was talking about here, Matt, and he puts lock Jackson Thebus through it with a beautiful little offload. Now, Thebus displays some fancy footwork for a big second row to get some extra meters on the line break and then barrels through Cecil Africa uh, you know, to, to even get even more meters here on the end of this run. After that, another series of quick passes sees fullback Bowden Waka putting hooker Vili Tolatau through another huge gap with another fantastic offload. And the big man might have been able to power his way through for the try, but he makes the smart play here and finds try scoring machine Dougie Fife, who caps his counterattack off with a score under the post and an automatic seven points. Are they calling Dougie Fife Barney in the locker room? Do you have any any feedback on that? Uh, nothing from my sources, Matt, but I think they're missing a huge opportunity if they aren't doing that. In fact, uh, so what, I'm one for three in, in old guy jokes. Continue. Yeah, so Dougie Fife, again, done that all year, Matt. He's been, you know, he's the second leading try scorer in the league at this point, um, playing playing great. Uh, able to, he, he's been great at finishing off these counterattacks that New England has, has put forth. You know, again, as I mentioned, they kind of thrive in these chaotic situations, um, and they have a lot of finishers who are able to, you know, take, take a ball and, and bust through a kind of defensive line that's in disarray. Now, Matt, the Legion have really been ravaged by injury this year. Uh, Patrick Madden, who was the first round pick for the Legion, the MLR draft, was getting his first start along with Zarconi, as we previously mentioned. Madden is the team's third option at scrum half after Nate Augsburger and Carlo Denishin, who were both out for this game. And you could tell it's really not a natural position fit for him. He was uh, indecisive, slow to some of the rocks, having trouble anticipating where the ball was going to end up. And that really slowed the Legion down uh, throughout the game. And aside from Madden at nine, you know, once Iglesias went down with the injury, Cecil Africa stepped in to the 10 spot from his normal fullback position, a position, again, that he's not necessarily comfortable with himself having not really played that before in the past he struggled with it especially his kicking game throughout the day um but you could just tell there was a, a even more lack of a lack of cohesion in that back line yeah and, and brian ray i think it was on twitter from america's rugby news it suggested putting africa at nine because he plays that on the hsbc seven cir circuit but this is 15s and we don't have the intel down on the pitch and we know that africa can catch pass and kick 
on a world class level. So, you know, by default, maybe he's the he's the better option at 10 there. We don't we don't have any of the other intel. But, you know, a credit to him and a credit to a guy like Sam Wuching, who was all over the pitch. And as Brian Hightower aptly pointed out in the broadcast, he's got 80 minutes. He doesn't stop. He's flying over all over the pitch, giving up his body. And he was man of the match in a losing cause, which which really is a statement. Yeah, Matt, credit to the Legion in this one. You know, they didn't just go away and hide, you know, once the Free Jacks came out to an intense start, that they put some points up on the board. Uh, Ryan Mattias off the bench provided a spark as well coming into the game early. So, you know, there is a lot of potential. There are a lot of talent. Uh, they just have to pull it all together. At least the positive, if there is one, is they're getting these other players, the experience that might come back and benefit them later in the season because it's a marathon, Zach. I agree, Matt. Yeah, that, that may be the right call. You know, San Diego not completely out of it this year, but they've lost a lot of games, and especially in the West with, with the Giltinis running the table. You know, it may be beneficial for them to get some of these younger players some reps so that when they are back at full strength, when they get fly half Joe Peterson back in the lineup, Chris Robshaw, who may be out for the rest of this season, but, you know, looking forward to even next season when they get all these star players back. Um, and, yeah, Matt, I think this game was just – doomed for, for San Diego from the start. Just the New England's aggressive uh, defense, you know, very in your face, was the perfect kind of uh, counterpoint to, to, uh, to expose the San Diego offense that just didn't have that, that cohesive uh, unit in the back line. So they were under pressure all day, and they just had a hard time even from the, from the first whistle. They absolutely did. Anything left for us, Zach, in this segment? Matt, yeah, I wanted to give a quick shout out actually to the ladies from Lindenwood University. I watched this game after the New England Free Jacks uh, San Diego game. They put up 50 points on Life University to secure their third straight D1 Women's Elite National Championship. Uh, Just a physically dominating performance from them in what was a really great game of rugby to watch. So congrats to them uh, and and on, you know, obviously a tough season with COVID and everything, but just... uh, really being dominant in that rugby space uh, in, in the women's college game. And, and again, a really entertaining game to watch all around. Yeah. Standing ovation, Lindenwood way to go. And on that note, we are out of time. Thank you, Zach Lanning for this week's Zach attack, the big play breakdown. And thank you for joining us and please check out our other segments, including our major league rugby show. Our global rugby recap. What are the odds? Our Major League Rugby Sports Bet Show with the Philly Godfather, John Bradshaw Layfield, the WWE legend, and Gifty Bailu, Martial Law. And please sign up for our American Red Cross Rugby Wrap-Up Blood Donor Team.